Hello and welcome back to another episode of Measurement in a Minute. I'm your host, Justin Kozak with Lakeside Process Controls. And in today's video, we're going to switch gears to start talking through some of Rosemount's and Micromotion's flow meter technologies. To do so, we're going to have to take a step back all the way to the beginning to review the basics of fluid mechanics and some fundamental principles you're going to need to understand to pick an appropriate flow meter technology. So first of all, what is a flow rate? There's two common definitions that you'll see, a mass flow rate and a volumetric flow rate. And these look very similar, but there's a very important difference. In essence, both are saying this is a way for us to measure the amount of fluid traveling in a given cross-sectional area of pipe in some unit of time. And this unit of time can be minutes, hours, years, you name it. The big difference between these two is how we actually measure the amount of fluid. We can do this in terms of the mass of the fluid, which is consistent, independent of pressures and temperatures, or we can measure it in terms of volume. And the volume is gonna be dependent on the pressure and temperature. And that's a big, big difference to understand between these two measurements. Uh, and the reason for this is because if we do not account for changes in pressures and temperatures, we may not have a very accurate representation of the actual amount of fluid in our pipe. Okay, and we do have a little bit of a way to correct for this, uh, and that could be through compensation, which we'll talk through. And then another way that goes with this is also by standardizing that volumetric measurement, which is important when we look at totalizing over time. So if we look at an actual volumetric flow rate, this is just gonna be a representation of the average velocity of that fluid in that given cross-sectional area. A way we can standardize this to account for deviations as pressures and temperature changes is by referencing some sort of base of set of reference conditions. And most commonly it's one bar and 15 degrees Celsius in Canada. So we would take that actual volumetric flow rate, multiply it by the ratio of the actual density over the standardized density in order to get some sort of standardized volumetric flow rate that we consistently use. Keep in mind, this is not compensating for changes in pressures and temperatures and any sort of error because of changes in density are still gonna occur, but this is gonna allow us to add these standardized volumes over time which is very important for totalizations. There are different standards based on the industries that you're in. We most commonly hear of normal cubic meters or standard cubic meters. And again, you can see in this reference table here, the difference is uh, what temperature are we referencing back to. If you go to fill up gas at the pumps, you're gonna see volume corrected to 15 degrees Celsius. And the reason we are doing this again is to make sure that we have a consistent set of conditions that when you buy gasoline, might not like the price, but at least it'll be a consistent reference. If you have any questions about measurement instrumentation or any other of our products, feel free to reach out to us at www.lakesidecontrols.com. Thanks and have a great day.